Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. From existing sports plane to e-racing machine, former Speaker Gingrich proposes moon-based sweepstakes, and the U.S. Air Force marks the 30th anniversary of the first flight of the B-2. Welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I'm your host, Sophie Herlock. Condor Aviation has made its name building and testing modifications to light aircraft. Now, eight engineers from Condor Aviation will be applying that same expertise to create a customized electric aircraft for Air Race E. Condor Aviation's airfield site underwent major renovation and now houses a full engineering shop that designs, builds, and tests modifications to light aircraft. Martin Wiseman, the head of Team Condor, said the company does not intend to reinvent the wheel. There are some brilliant proven airframes out there. And with some admittedly extensive modification, we can change the powertrain from fossil fuels to electric. What needs to be considered is the weight of the batteries to enable the aircraft to run at full speed for the duration required. There are two options available, an airframe capable of carrying a large 250 horsepower plus motor with heavy batteries, or a lighter frame with a 100 horsepower motor and lighter batteries. Condor Aviation is one of just a few companies in the UK permitted to design and build or modify experimental aircraft under the new E-conditions. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's never been a better time to become a pilot. At the Sling Pilot Academy, you can get your private, commercial, and instrument ratings in nine months for less than $63,000 and do it in modern, fun airplanes. Your flight training is going to be as exciting as your future career as an airline pilot. SlingPilotAcademy.com Welcome back. With all this interesting news coming out of the aviation industry, it's time for today's trip around the patch. Volocopter has presented the design for its newest air taxi model, Volo City, their fourth generation EV toll. The Volo City has been designed to meet the safety standards specified by the European Aviation Safety Agency and incorporates user feedback as well as test data from all previous Volocopter generations. With a calculated range of 18 nautical miles and air speed of 60 knots, the Volo City is designed to service as an on demand inner city air taxi. Another record has been set by the WE Expedition as 23-year-old Arohi Pandit became the first woman to cross the Pacific Ocean in an LSA. In a Facebook post, the WE Expedition said on Wednesday, Arohi in the Pipistrel since 1912 named Mahi flew for 3 hours and 50 minutes over the Pacific Ocean and the International Date Line to land in a new country on a new continent on a new day at Anadyr, Russia. The pilot and passenger of a beach bonanza that was being photographed over the San Francisco Bay found themselves in cold water after the plane's engine failed and they were forced to ditch. The plane's owner, David Lesh, who has a large social media following, and his passenger were able to exit the airplane before it sank. While in the water, Lesh and his passenger shot selfies while they waited for rescue. Some have suggested that Lesh ditched the airplane on purpose as a publicity stunt, but he has vigorously denied doing so. Jazz Aviation announced it has signed an agreement with Toronto Airways for the carrier to become the 20th organization in the Jazz Aviation Pathways program. The Jazz app will provide potential employment opportunities for qualifying TAI instructors to transition to first officer positions at Jazz, providing a reliable, high-quality source of new hire pilots. Jazz continues to work with industry partners such as TAI to find ways to promote the profession and establish career pathways for pilots. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Un einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you.
there's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. It's well known that space travel is difficult and expensive, but former Speaker of the U.S. House Newt Gingrich is proposing that the U.S. government offer a $2 billion prize to a private company that can establish a lunar base. Gingrich, along with others who are skeptical of NASA's ambitious plan to return to the moon by 2024, wants to see if private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin can establish such a base faster and less expensively than NASA, according to a summary of the plan. NASA's return to the moon is estimated to cost $50 billion or more. Gingrich and others believe that private companies can make the plan a reality for less money. Gingrich and his co-authors are trying to sell President Trump on the plan, but White House spokesman Will Boynton would not discuss any internal communications about the idea. NASA said it has not received any formal proposal. 30 years ago, an oddly shaped and dark colored new plane took to the sky for the first time at the legendary Plant 42 in Palmdale, California. That plane, the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber, went on to join the U.S. Air Force's fleet and has been a staple of the nation's global air power dominance ever since. The B-2's manufacturer, Northrop Grumman, hosted an event to mark the B-2's 30th anniversary of its first flight. At an event at Plant 42, hundreds of employees, local leaders, and military guests were on hand on the event, which included Major General James Dawkins, 8th Air Force and Joint Global Strike Operations Commander. Dawkins flew the Spirit of Pennsylvania B-2 into combat and took the time to thank those at the event who were responsible for making his mission a success. Following the B-2's maiden flight in 1989, the B-2 would eventually make its way to nearby Edwards Air Force Base, where it underwent initial developmental testing. Edwards AFB continues to be a part of the B-2's testing of operational systems capabilities improvements. And that wraps things up for us today. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook to get real-time 24-7 updates on the latest aviation and aerospace news, head over to aero-news.net. I hope you had a wonderful start to your week and I'll see you right back here tomorrow.